Hey guys, I'm Naya and welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I decided to go over the top 10 cards from Power of the Elements since we already did the full set analysis, so it's only suitable. Please let me know down in the comments what you think are the best cards and which ones are you going to be picking up. Before we begin, I would also like to encourage you to subscribe and also check out all of the social media, including the newly created Patreon, if you want, of course. So, going over the actual cards. The first one I decided to put Ultima Slayer. It's kind of very obvious like the card is busted and um, a couple things I want to say about the card is I think cards like these when they say you cannot respond and they just seem very very strong and they're not once per turn I think they are a necessary evil they're part of the game right now boards right now are very very strong and we need cards like these to essentially just break them to be able to even play and um, I think it's going to be a staple card I think it's incredibly, incredibly powerful also, not just that it breaks boards, it also grants you incredible pluses with the monsters you actually sent to the graveyard. And if we take a couple monsters as examples, you have the Evo Twin Link, which by itself also gets rid of a card. So with one card, you also got rid of two cards and you need to play the Evo Twin Brick, you could say. But I think it's very useful and I think it's worth running it. Then you also have Entus, which pops a card. And you also have another one which is actually the next one we're going to be covering and it's Garura the world premiere card which only we got here in the TCG and uh, I've heard a lot of talk about it and some people say it's not that great because it's essentially a bit better mud dragon but I heavily disagree with that I think it's an, an amazing card being a super poly target which covers some other matchups that uh, mud dragon for example couldn't cover like just looking at the splite archetype dropping in power of the elements Garura covers it together with super polymerization and you have decks that run super polymerization by themselves already so it's not like you need to put super poly in like a random deck you can also play it in decks that would run it regardless so Garura grants that you have a way to counter the splite end board and also like going first and just setting it you also just get of, get rid of some materials but paired up with ultimate slayer if you send it you get a draw so you out a monster and you also get a draw i think that's honestly busted and also looking at nadir servant like if you just go through cards that send cards to the graveyard nadir servant is one of the better ones so you essentially get a draw on top of searching which is very reminiscent of engage which is kind of funny but you know i think it's a really really nice card especially for a world premiere card i think it's i think it's cool that we got it now the next one is exosister martha uh, this one is a secret rare over here in the ocg it's not um i don't really mind it uh, i think the card is incredible for the exosister archetype you have um a special summon in the form of Alice. You have a couple like ways to get to your XYZ monsters, but nothing as straightforward as Martha. And also it has the disruption effect just like any other, but it is a one card XYZ that you can just easily make. And then with the XYZ, you search the trap card. So together with Martha, I also wanna mention the Returnia, I think it's called over here. The trap card is busted. So you have a ways of disruption through the XYZ monsters as well as the trap card card and I think that's um not only is the a really nice boost to Exosister but moving forward is if Splite and Tier Limit actually become almost half as dominant as in the OCG I think Exosister is going to be a really nice deck to cover like these matchups to just counter them completely so even though the deck might not be as strong by itself they are getting support in the form of these two cards and I think that's really really nice just looking at any kind of deck that receives support and with that being said we can also mention the next card which is Mathmix Circular like this card is honestly so busted like I went through some combos like I looked at some stuff and Circular is um I think cir Circular is very dangerous I think Mathmix is going to be very dangerous moving forward like the deck itself has always been quite strong like if we're being completely honest it was able to get a couple wins and it was able to do well but it wasn't as powerful as some of the top decks like it was just 
a basic rogue deck. But with Circular, it received a much needed boost. And Circular itself being a very strong one card combo, getting you to the trap card. And also like the effect is so busted. Like you get the special summon, you get the send, which is for cost. So even if it gets negated, like you still have that card in the graveyard to be able to special summon it out and you get the surge because of course you're gonna special summon from the graveyard and you're gonna get the surge anyway. So it's like, it's amazing. I think that is incredible for the math mech deck. I like it a lot. I think the card is an incredible boost to the deck. And um, yeah, moving forward to the next card, we have Kurikara Div Incarnate. So uh, I've had a bit of time to think about this card. Um, I think it's very strong. However, I don't think it's going to be applicable in every single format, just like a lot of these staple cards aren't. Like looking at Lightning Storm, a Chippo Tactics Talent, like you have a couple cards that you say, of course, yeah, they're nice, they're busted, but you can't always use them to their fullest potential. So I think Kurikara is um, an incredible card coming out of this set. And I think it's important to also like keep in mind that you get a couple copies of this, this card, like just get a place it for yourself and just have it ready because inevitably a format is going to come in which the card is going to be incredibly strong so just looking at actual implications your opponent is going to be using monster effects during your turn like that's essentially how decks work and decks right now they're strong combo decks which usually will interact with you if you look at a deck like despia they are going to have that branded in red online they're going to have maybe even a mirror j banish if they get it back with oddly beatum or if they haven't used it so they're always going to be using some effects during your turn and then the next thing I want to touch upon is the fact that even if you only get rid of one monster, it's still going to get the boost of 1500. So it's going to be a 3k and it's going to be able to beat over another disruption that they may not have used during your turn yet. And the effect in the end phase is also really nice. Like maybe you're not taking a monster that's going to necessarily benefit you, but you are maybe taking a like a piece of the combo for them or a piece of disruption they might have for you if you just take it from the graveyard. So I think honestly the card is so so strong and you need to have a couple copies on hand even if it's not going to be useful in every single deck or every single format. Now the next one is just DPE Starlight. <laughs> like I get that we don't have exactly accessible copies of DPE but it's nice to have like a just a cool looking one even though the secret there is really really nice and I'm not a huge fan of them printing cards before they get accessible uh, but something to take into account as well is the fact that it's not exactly being played right now so it's not like we're exactly lacking that DPE in every single deck because it's not that accessible just because we don't have Anaconda or Fusion Destiny at 3. And I also don't think it's worth running Fusion Destiny at 2 because you also have two bricks. Now to each their own, some people run it and it's working for them, which is fine. But I also do think they might put Fusion Destiny to 3, especially now with the DPE Starlight reprint, just because it's not really going to be doing much. Like... There are a couple arguments that at 3, of course, it's going to be more consistent to see that DPE. But in my personal opinion, I think DPE is a very strong card, but it's also very fair. It can be outed, and if it gets outed and you have um, a way to get rid of it from the graveyard, you have Call by the Grave, you have a DD Crow, you have even Skullmeister to just negate the effect in the graveyard. Like, you have ways to sort of keep it there or banish it or something. And even if you don't, and it's your turn, you still have the option of OTKing if you have enough gas and just enough power to go through the opponent's board. So there's a lot of arguments, you know, for and against when it comes to Fusion Destiny at 3, uh, but I still think like just by itself, DP Starlight is a really cool looking card. All right, now the next one, it might be a bit polarizing just because I am putting it in the top 10 cards and it's Draco Utopian Aura, but I don't think it's as strong as some of the trap cards or counter trap cards like the effect is nice and i still think when a card is very generic i think it's important to like put it in the, in the top 10 cards list or like just pick it up if you look at cards like idp or just i don't know crackdown or like random trap cards that have come out in in sets over the years i think they're really nice to keep on hand because yeah, sometimes they're just a flop. You know, you have like the <laughs> witches strikes and stuff like that when they're just not really good. 
But also looking at a chaff card like this, I don't think it's going to be that expensive simply because it doesn't seem that great at first glance. So that's why I think it's important to pick up because a format is going to come when a card like this is going to be useful simply because it's that generic and because it is a counter trap card. And overall trap decks, I think it's like, they're really annoying at times, but also in the last like formats and in the recent years, Trap decks just kind of started to seem lame and like I don't want to be rude but they're just not as strong because combo decks and just other control decks are much more prevalent and they can deal with those trap decks easily. So it's nice to see like a random generic trap card just being printed and it's it's a trap card that you're gonna have to sort of think about when you're playing. Okay they might have that negate. Also there is a downside. They need to get rid of the monster to like to, to, to take your monster if they want, of course. So it is a nag, I think. Like getting rid of your monster, that's that's a lot. Uh, especially if you're a trap deck, because how many monsters do you actually have? Like you're not gonna banish like a golden lord from your hand. That just wouldn't make sense. So a couple things like, you know, to take into account, I still wanted to mention it in this list because like I said, I think it's important to, to pick up those cards, especially if they're cheap and just have them in your binder, just have them ready or like, I don't know, trade them off to a trap deck player in a trade. Like, um, I think the card is nice. It's not as strong as some of the cards in the set, but I still wanted to mention it. And then a couple words on the two archetypes. So I know it's top 10 cards, but I still wanted to put both archetypes in here because I think Splite and Tear Lament are going to be very, very, very strong. I have talked about both of these decks a lot on the channel, so I won't spend too, spend too much time. And obviously, if you have looked at OCG meta, if you have looked over any of the deck lists, combos, those decks are going to be strong. I don't think it's going to be a tier zero format. I don't think they're going to be as dominant as in the OCG, but I still think especially because they don't seem to be that expensive. If you look at the rarities, like it's not all secret and it's even not all ultra. You have a couple important like money cards, of course, uh, but you also have very accessible cards. So I think it's important to also mention these decks, not only because they're going to be strong, but because of the accessibility, they are going to be um, heavily played. So it's important to think about them, to think about the counters. I have give videos on the channel about that. And also to familiarize yourself with these decks because they are going to be quite strong moving forward. Splite itself, just being able to spam the board with bodies and also dodge Nibiru, that's incredible. It utilizes Halki Fibrex to like its fullest potential almost. And then you have tier limit builds, which utilizes Punk and stuff like that, even branded here in the TCG where we don't have max C. And you can actually pair a deck like this with Punk that like is focused on special summoning and you're not afraid of max C, that's incredibly, incredibly strong. And even without Ishizu cards, it outweighs it because you have those engines that wouldn't work in the OCG because of the presence of Max C. So that's why I wanted to put both of these decks over here. It's very obvious they're going to be strong and just think about it. Like even if you're not picking those decks up, like I said, know, know what the cards do, familiarize yourself with the combos. Even if you wanted to run a deck that hard counters those strategies, it's important to keep them in mind because they are going to be very much present in the meta moving forward. And then as for the last card, I wanted to put a specific card out of the sprite strategy, which is Sprite Elf. And why am I just giving it a separate slot in the top 10 cards? It's generic. You don't need to use it only in the sprite strategy. If you just look at a couple combos, so if you go for a fiber combo in any deck, and a good example would be Adamantia, Agents, stuff like that, where you just get out level 2 monsters, which are very strong, but they cannot use their effects per Halki Fibers' restriction. If you link it off into Elf and Elf revives it, essentially you just got the monster out of the deck through Halki Fibrex, but you're not locked out of its effects because you revived it with Splite Elf. So you get the effects of um, Diviner, you get the effects of any Adamantia monster, and you're just getting pluses and you're not locked out of the effect, and I think that's busted. And just looking at reviving XYZ monsters like Toad, obviously, in the sprite strategy or any other strategy, if you look at reviving a Link monster, like you have a lot of different implications, and also the fact that it protects what it points to. If you go into Splite Elf at first, and then you make Fiber, like 
in the pointer so you can protect it and if you have a way to a tuner you know you're going to spite elf you revive the tuner and if, if you have another monster you're going to fiber it keep in mind though that spite elf cannot use this link material to turn it summoned so you need to you need to think about the combos you're going to be doing with it but i still think it's important to talk about this card because it's not a focused only for the spell right strategy like you can incorporate it into other ones as well and then another thing to keep in mind also together with hockey fibrax if you summon any kind of monster out with sprite elf because it is a quick effect so you can get just a free body you can use whichever monster hulk summons to be able to synchro summon you can use the body with sprite elf so if you go you pass the turn, you go fiber effect, summon out anything from TG Wonder Magician to Desert Locusts to like any, 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 any monster basically. And then you summon out an additional body with Sprite Elf. You just get an insta synchro monster just easily through both of these. I think it's going to be heavily explored. So that's why I wanted to point this monster out to just say, even if you're not picking up the entire sprite strategy, get your hands on sprite elf because it's generic, it's busted, and I think it's also going to be very much prevalent in the meta. So that's going to be it. Those are the top 10 cards or eight cards and two strategies or archetypes by themselves. Um, let me know if there's anything I have missed, if there's any other card you would maybe want to talk about. Mention it in the comments. I would love to interact with you guys. And also, of course, if you like the video, like it, sub to the channel, check out all of the social media, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!